Welcome back to Intuition. In today's video, we're going to be deriving the equation for the Jacobian, and we're going to be talking about how to use it to solve physical problems. All right, so let's hop into it. So in today's video, we're going to be concentrating on solving for the area of a certain region. The general formula for solving the area for a certain region is a double integral of a small area called dA. dA is a tiny area that you add up within the region that you're interested in to solve for the total area of the region, okay? So basically the double integral here says that you add up all the tiny areas within the region to calculate the total area of the region. Now here's the thing, when it comes to calculating the area, you need to know what coordinates you're using to solve for the area. And the coordinate system that everyone should be familiar with is the Cartesian coordinate or the real space coordinates called XY, right? And the real space coordinates is called the real space coordinates because when you plot the region in this coordinate space, you actually get the real picture of the region that you're interested in. Because you can use other coordinates that's going to give you a different representation of the physical region that you're interested in. But when you're using Cartesian coordinates or XY coordinates, when you plot the region in this coordinate system, you get to actually see the shape of the region that you're trying to get the area of. And when it comes to getting the area of this region, you take a tiny area, it's an infinitesimal area, which means as small as possible. And the dimensions of these tiny areas is going to be dx by dy. So dx dy will be a tiny square that you add up within the region to get the total area of the region. So the integral would be a double integral over the tiny area and the tiny area will be dx times dy. Okay, but here's the thing. Sometimes it's easier to describe a certain region with a different coordinate system. Sometimes it's too cumbersome to describe a certain region using Cartesian coordinates. So for convenience, we can switch to an alternative coordinate system. And it's okay for us to do that. We can all, we can switch, we can use whatever coordinate system we like. As long as we know how to convert that coordinate system into real space coordinates. So for example here, let's say you're using an alternative coordinate system, UV. Now if you take a tiny area in UV space, you'll get an area of DU by DV, which will be DU DV. But here's the thing, this is a tiny square in UV space. It doesn't mean that it's going to continue to be a square when you map it back into real space. Because if you plot this square on the Cartesian coordinates, the square might change. It might change from being a square to being a parallelogram. And that can happen because the DU segment is going to be converted into a DR sub U segment. And just because DU is a horizontal segment in UV space does not mean that it's going to be represented by a horizontal segment in real space. DR sub U could end up being a slanted segment which has X component and Y component. And the same thing for the DV segment. The DV segment in UV space is a perfectly vertical segment, but when it's converted over to real space, it can end up being a slanted segment called dr sub v, which has an x component and y component. And when it comes to finding the specific area of a certain region, you need to use the tiny real space area to solve for the region area. So when we convert the area of du by dv into real space, we get a parallelogram of dr sub u cross dr sub v the cross product of the two segments. So the cross product of dr sub u and dr sub v is going to be the area of that parallelogram, of that tiny parallelogram. Now, here's the thing. How do we solve for dr sub u and dr sub v? Well, let's start with dr sub u. dr sub u is the segment created in real space by a change in u. What we need to look at is how, how a change in u affects a change in x and a change in y because x and y are the real space coordinates. To get dr sub u, we need to ask, how does x change when u changes? So that would be the slope dx du, which would be the partial derivative, the change in x over the change in u. That would be the i component of dr sub u. Plus, how does y change with a change in u? Well, we take the slope, the change in y over a change in u, that's gonna be represented by the unit vector j. And of course, to get the change in X and the change in Y, we multiply by DU to cancel the DUs in the denominator of the two components. And to get the real space segment for a change in V, we do the same thing. DR sub V is going to be equal to the partial derivative of X with respect to the change in V plus the partial derivative of Y with respect to the change in V which will be the J component. And we multiply the entire thing by DV. And this ends up being the segment of DV 
plotted in real space. So now all we have to do is take the cross product of these two segments. When it comes to doing cross product, it means exactly what it is. It means multiply the cross terms of the two vectors. So we're going to have dr sub u cross dr sub v. So we just need to take the x component of dr sub u, multiply it times the y component of dr sub v, minus the y component of dr sub u times the x component of dr sub v. So it will be this cross product term times du dv. Now, it is this product here in parentheses that we call the Jacobi. So we go through all of this to show that we can get the area of any region using any coordinate system we like, as long as we know how to convert an infinitesimal area in that coordinate system into a real space area. And we do that by multiplying by the Jacobian and we have derived the equation to be able to calculate the Jacobian, okay? Okay, so now that we've done this, let's go ahead and answer a question. This question says, find the real space area between the functions r equals four and r equals four theta divided by pi plus two in the first quadrant. This problem right here will be a classic example of why we need to understand how to find area using different coordinate system. Because if you try to convert these two functions into real space coordinates, the equations are going to be a lot harder to deal with. And as long as we know how to calculate the Jacobian of polar coordinates, we'll be able to calculate the real space area of the region. And another way to convince yourself is to go ahead and plot these two equations in R theta space. So if you plot these equations in R theta space, look at how simple the region is. We end up getting a triangle because R equals four is just a constant. So we just say horizontal line and R equals four theta over pi plus two is just a linear equation. So it's just a straight line. So the boundary between the horizontal line and the, and the slope line ends up being a triangle. This is a representation of the region in R theta space. And what we want to do is we want to find the area of this region in real space. So let's go ahead and plot these two Two functions in real space. If we go ahead and plot these two functions in real space, this is what it looks like. Because r equals 4 is a circle of radius 4, and we're only concerned about the area in the first quadrant, so it's a quarter of a circle. So that would be r equals 4 in real space. And r equals 4 theta over pi plus 2 in real space is no longer a straight line. In real space, it's a curved equation. But that's fine, because we know how to calculate the Jacobian, and we know how to convert an area in r theta space into an area in real space. So we're good to go. So the first thing we wanna do, we wanna calculate the Jacobian for our data coordinates. And in order for us to calculate the Jacobian for our data coordinates, we need to know what the relationship between our data and x, y are. And these equations you should know. So we know that x equals the radius times the cosine of the angle. And we know that y equals the radius times the sine of the angle. Now we know that the Jacobian for our data is going to be the partial derivative of x with respect to r times the partial derivative of y with respect to theta minus the partial derivative of y with respect to r times the partial derivative of x with respect to theta. And all we gotta do is plug in. And if we simplify this equation, we can factor out an r. And when we factor out an r, we get r times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And we know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. And therefore the Jacobian equals r. So now we can go ahead and solve for the area of that region because all we have to do is take the double integral of r times dr times d theta over the region that we're interested in. The region that we're interested in is in the first quadrant. So within the first quadrant, theta varies from zero to pi over two. Theta is gonna go from zero to pi over two and we know that r, that r is bounded by the two functions. It's bounded by the function r equals four on its outer edge, and it's bounded by the function four theta over pi plus two on the lower end, okay? So those are the boundaries for r, and those are the boundaries for theta. So we just need to put the boundaries on the integral and go ahead and solve the integral. Okay, so we go ahead and put the boundaries on the, on the double integral for theta and r. So we have r dr, so we're going to integrate the function r. We just raise the power by one and divide by the new power, right? So it's gonna be r to the two divided by two. So all we have to do is plug in the top boundary and subtract the bottom boundary. So we plug in the top boundary for r and subtract the bottom boundary. And when we do that, we get six minus eight theta over pi minus eight theta squared over pi squared. So now we have a function of theta that we must integrate. So now we just need to integrate this function with respect to theta and plug in our boundaries once again. And when we do that, we get six theta minus four theta squared over pi minus eight theta cubed over three times pi squared. So now we just need to plug in our top boundary and our bottom boundary and take the difference. So when you plug in pi over two in for theta, you get five pi over three. And when you plug in zero, you get zero for the entire term, right? 
So that's five pi over three minus zero, which equals five pi over three. And that will be the area of the region, five pi over three. Okay, so when we take a look at our answer choice, we get our answer is answer choice C, five pi over three. And that is the area of the region between R equals four and R equals four theta over pi plus two in the first quadrant. Okay, so I know that this was more advanced, but like I said, we cover a wide range of topic on this channel from beginner level to intermediate level to advanced level. Uh, we can do it all and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to as well. So go ahead and let me know if this video was helpful. Uh, if you're taking an advanced math course or if you were just trying to learn something, uh, let us know how we did. And uh, go ahead and give us a like, leave a comment in the comment section, help the channel grow, help us to reach more people and have positive impact on the world. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give us a like and hit the comment section. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye.